I ended up um, moving to the city of Detroit and becoming a hardcore punk. And I became a stripper as well as a lesbian. And um, my girlfriend and I moved to Hollywood, California to be rich and famous. We have a wonderful testimony for you today of a young lady named Brooke who suffered sexual abuse from the time she was in third grade until she was 12. What followed was a life filled with cocaine, sexual promiscuity, clubbing, exotic dancing, the occult, violence, danger, and lesbianism. You'll hear how God rescued Brooke from death on several occasions as he wooed her to his heart with love. And you'll hear how God instantly broke all the power of the enemy over her life once she finally decided to follow Jesus. God has all power in heaven and on earth. So if you or a friend of yours is trapped in a seemingly inescapable lifestyle, you're going to want to hear how the power of God can set anyone free from anything. So let's listen to the story of Brooke Donnelly and gain hope and faith for the life of the one we love who continues to live in bondage. Growing up, I was sexually abused. Um, from there, I got into drugs and alcohol, just very rebellious. Just, I went to church, but um, also just had a, a double face, you know, I was two-faced. And um, I was just very rebellious in my heart. And um, I ended up um, moving to the city of Detroit and becoming a hardcore punk and I became a stripper as well as a lesbian. And um, my girlfriend and I moved to Hollywood, California to be rich and famous. Being in Hollywood was unlike anything I've ever experienced in my life because um, it was like living in a plastic world where everybody was an actor or actress. Everybody was after something in Hollywood, so they were acting off stage and um, I just found it to be a very empty world. Because of the way I looked, which I had um, shaved my head, but I also had like a piece of black hair that came like this and also uh, a, pony, a black ponytail. And, you know, had crazy makeup. And my girlfriend and I were punks and we looked crazy. So we didn't quite fit in the Hollywood lesbian scene because in the in Hollywood, the, all the lesbians look like prima donnas, you know. They are very blonde, long-haired, and gorgeous. And um, so when we came in on the scene, it was, it was quite a splash. <laughs> it was really neat to be an extra in Hollywood. Um, I got to see what it was like behind the scenes. I got to meet famous people, and, and it really helped me in knowing that um, it's all just a world of make-believe. <laughs> I was under a demonic um, influence of my girlfriend who was, who was actually a witch. And so everything she said and did, everything she told me to do, I did. Every conversation I had, every conversation someone had to me, I had to report back to her. I felt like it was love. I felt like that was really what love was. And um, that was my idea of love. When my girlfriend and I first got to Hollywood, um, it was her idea to go up to West Hollywood, which is a gay city, um, to find out who's who. And um, so we left our motel and we set out about 11 o'clock at night and we had leather jackets on, combat boots. I had a baseball hat on, and my head was shaved, so you couldn't really tell I was a girl. Kind of look, we both looked like guys. And um, as we were walking down the street, and we were in a neighborhood where we really had no idea the kind of danger we were in. I mean, coming from Detroit, it's one thing, but then coming to the streets of Hollywood, all you really, all I really knew about Hollywood was what I saw on TV. So I didn't know it was full of gangs. And so as we walked down the street towards um, Santa Monica Boulevard, um, 
there were two guys at a payphone, and um, we were just walking, and we were holding a conversation amongst ourselves, and we passed them. And as soon as we passed them, the guy that was on the payphone just hung up the phone very abruptly, and they both followed right behind us. And as we were walking, and as they were walking, we were we just stopped talking, and I I knew that my life was in danger. And I kept walking and I was holding on to a chain in my pocket. And I was thinking, you know, I can turn around and just whop one of you guys right in the face. And I thought, you know, I'd do some damage. But the truth of the matter was I was way too scared. And in a moment, I remembered something that my mom had taught me growing up as a child. And she said, if you're ever in a dangerous situation, call on the name of the Lord and you will be saved. And so in my heart, I just prayed, Lord, please help. And as soon as those words left my heart, heat came down the back of my legs in between me and them, and the two guys walked off into a parking lot. And I kept walking. I didn't say a word to my girlfriend, and she she turns to me and she says, did you just feel that heat? And I said, yes, I just prayed. About a year after being in Hollywood, um, we had gotten an apartment. Um, we were we were now getting known in the in the gay scene, and we came back from a club one night. And I'd been drinking, and I was a bit tipsy, and so were the people with us. And um, we came into our parking garage, and as we were going walking into the uh, lobby. Um, we noticed a couple standing there, and the girl had always uh, asked me, asked us questions about what it was like to be gay, even though she had a boyfriend. And um, so she's standing there with her boyfriend, and we push the elevator door button, and it opens. And before I realized what was happening, her boyfriend grabbed our bodyguard, who this girl that was our bodyguard, she was kind of a husky girl with a mohawk grabbed her, threw her in the elevator, and just began to punch her in the face, screaming obscenities at her, you know, actually because she was gay. He was just just punching her in the face. She's gushing blood, and uh, my girlfriend gets in. She's all scrappy, you know, trying to get in there and fight, and that's not helping, and um, I'm still standing outside the elevator going, what am I doing out here? I think I better get in there and help. Okay, like a big dummy, I drop all my stuff, get in the elevator, and there was so much commotion going on that um, the guy punched me in the face, and I went over and my elbow hit the button to the basement, and the door shut, and now we're going down into the sub-basement. And as we're going down, he punched me again in the face, and I was just like, ow, you know what, that hurt. And so we went down, and... um, the elevator doors open up. We come piling out into this cement room that was part of the sub parking garage, and there's nobody around. And uh, he's the last one out of the elevator, and he's reaching in his back pocket, and he said, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill you, and I'm going to kill you. And my life just went, Whoosh. I'm dead. And I just remembered that prayer that I prayed again, and I just prayed, Lord, please help from my heart. As soon as I prayed that, he reached his hand out and he said, I'd like you to accept my apology. And I was like, oh, okay, that was fast. And and my girlfriend's like, we're not shaking your hand. And then we all get back in the elevator with this guy and his girlfriend, complete peace. We push the button to our floor, ride up, Nothing else happened. <laughs> Your passion that beats for Christ alone. I really had a um, a wall in my thinking because I chose to become a lesbian. I remember the day I chose it. A deception just took over. I couldn't see anymore, and so. Um, as I went through these experiences where the Lord was drawing me, making himself 
real to me, showing me, Brooke, when you call upon me, I will answer you because I'm faithful to my name and to my word. You can trust me. I know you've been hurt by males in the past, but you can trust me. And God drew me through those times when I cried out to him. He drew me and and he he eventually opened my eyes to where I could where I could see. My eyes were opened um, one night when the Lord drew me to a ravine and I was having a conversation with the Lord and basically he showed me I had a fork I had I was at the fork in my in my road and I asked God about my lesbian lover that's the kind of mind frame I had that I I couldn't even see that I was asking the living God about my lesbian lover and so when I asked God about my lover the word I heard was no And when I heard no in my heart, it was like God gave me a window of sanity and I, I conviction entered my heart. And I realized that I just asked God almighty about my lesbian lover. And so that was where I was able to make a choice with a right mind in that, in that little window of uh, sanity that God allowed me to have. And I thank God for it. After choosing the Lord Jesus, choosing to follow the Lord Jesus, which I will tell you was the hardest decision I ever made in my life because I was giving up the God that I had made out of my girlfriend. She was literally my life. She was everything to me. She was all the love I've ever, I had ever experienced up until that point. And so when I chose to follow Jesus, he just met me right where I was at. I didn't know what the next step was. So after I chose to follow him, I I went back to my apartment because I had burned a bridge with my parents. They they had told me, Brooke, you can't live as a lesbian, you know, and be in the kingdom of God. So coming back was a very difficult, it was very difficult. And... Um, when I did come back to my parents' house, all I, ha- I received were open arms. I'm literally the prodigal daughter. But because I had been into such darkness, because I had gotten into witchcraft and b- my heart had been so hardened, I had, you know, I had drank and done a lot of drugs, um, my mind was pretty gone. It was, it was a, I would just say I was a mush brain. And um, I was just a broken person um, coming home. And so the Lord just met me right where I was. And line upon line, as I began to read the Word of God, the Word of God began to transform my mind. And I literally met Jesus in the Scriptures. And when I found out what He had done in my place, and how much he loved me, and I, I actually met true love. I'm just so thankful that I had a mother who knew the Word of God. My parents raised us um, in the truth, and I'm so thankful that my mom, my sisters, um, and different family members prayed for me. In fact, one of my sisters got her entire Bible college to pray. After they, after they met me. And so I just know that God, I know God answers prayer, and I know that um, prayer was the biggest factor in what um, brought me to the Lord. Just realizing that we are sinners and that it does take a step on our part to, to ask for forgiveness to humble ourselves before the Lord and say, you know what, I, I have sinned against you, Lord. I have sinned against you, and I thank you for your forgiveness. It's that acknowledging my own wretchedness and being able to receive the forgiveness that's been offered to me. After having come to Christ, um, I, I went through many, many years of healing and restoration, but and they were very painful years. But 
what I can say is that the Lord has restored to me all of the years that were taken from me. I have now, I, I, was, I was able to um, receive forgiveness and ask for forgiveness from my mom and before she died. And um, I, I can't even tell you um, what that was like, just having relationships in my family restored. I was the black sheep and I was brought home to a family that just opened their arms to me. And really they, they never expected me to come back. They, they thought, some of them thought that, um, that I would die out there. And had they not prayed, I probably would have. But um, I, w what my life is like now, I, I am content with Jesus Christ in my relationship. I know I'm loved. I have love and I'm able to give forgiveness. Whereas there was a time when I couldn't forgive because I hadn't received forgiveness. But now I have received so much forgiveness. And so I've been able to forgive people that have hurt me in my life. And that's, that's opened a whole new door of freedom to me. I would say to a woman who's caught in lesbianism or any kind of stronghold, whether it's witchcraft, drugs, you're in a relationship, I would say that you're thirsty. Your soul is thirsty. You're thirsting for the living God. And I can say to you that God is so real and God will meet you right where you are. And that same God that will meet you right where you are sent his own son, Jesus, to come and to take every sin that you're living in, everything that's ever been done to you, everything that you've ever done to anyone else. He's taken that sin upon his own self and he broke its power. And so I would say to you that there is freedom. There is freedom out of bondage. And it takes a step on your part. It takes you trusting in the Lord Jesus. Put your trust in the Lord Jesus. Just put your trust in him. He will not fail you. He will answer your, your prayer. He will. Are you the victim of childhood sexual abuse? Are you bound by homosexual confusion? Are you addicted to drugs, sex, alcohol, or other life-dominating substances or behaviors? Have you gone so far from God that you've lost all hope that He could possibly love you or want you anymore? Well, He does love you, and He does want you. Nothing you have ever done has ever changed the way He feels about you. He loves you unconditionally. It's built into His very nature, so there are no exceptions to His love. And He has all power in heaven and earth to set you free from anything. Yes, I mean anything. There is no power, no sin, no bondage that Jesus Christ cannot set you free from. So turn to Him right now and ask Him to forgive you and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. In 1 John 1, 9, God promises to forgive anyone who will ask Him to do those things. You are born with a purpose that comes from the mind of God. And even though you may have ruined plan A, He has a way of making plan B just as marvelous. So start today, walking in newness of life. Let Jesus Christ purge and cleanse you from all unrighteousness and fill you with His power to overcome sin and iniquity. He did it for Brooke, and He'll do it for you, no exceptions. Visit us at purepassion.us for more resources that can help you along the way. We have all kinds of articles, interviews, teaching resources, and links to ministries that can provide even more help. Every Pure Passion TV program from seasons one and two can be viewed directly from the website. So take advantage of what God has given us for you. Uh, but most of all, take advantage of His power and grace to set you free from any and every bondage and give you meaning and purpose for your remaining days on this earth and then everlasting life with Him in the glories of heaven. It's an offer you really shouldn't refuse. Until next week, I'm Jason Graves for Pure Passion. Pure Passion.